Hey guys, and welcome to On The Table. Yes, this is the last episode of 2011, which is probably going to be the last year before the apocalypse. But it doesn't matter, because we know Santa's brought you all the gaming goodness that you could ever want, and you have a ready supply of glue and paint to slap it all together in your local bunker. Yes, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look back at the entire series and pull out the best bits of what happened during the year. We're going to kick off by looking at our favorite miniatures. Yep, fish men, gribbly men, historical men, apocalyptic men. You might even say it's raining men. We're great lovers of pirate games here at Beast of War. In fact, anything that allows us to throw on a costume and throw a few dice around. However, despite having the body of a Greek god, I do have to draw the line at Amazons. Check out these new jungle fighting ladies from Freebooter Miniatures. But that's not all they do. We mentioned pirates, and that's something Freebooters do very well. Freebooters Fate is a pirate skirmish game that uses the excellent range of miniatures that Freebooter have to offer. So take a look and see if any catch your eye, me hearty. In this, the season of supernatural horror, we would be remiss if we didn't offer a reference to the master of horror himself, H.P. Lovecraft. These deep one and dark young models are straight from the pages of one of the Lovecraft's seminal works. But how did they manage to fathom those sculpts? Lovecraft himself only described these things as horrors of tentacles, shadows, and cycloptic madness. Perhaps blackball games know something we don't or something we never meant to know. Everything's went a bit old Mad Max over at Gen Con. After Andy and Daryl discussed the relaunch of Dark Age, the game on our Spotlight show, we've been seeing more and more interest building about this apocalyptic post-apocalyptic skirmish game. Yeah, where you kind of play a stranger in a strange land. But it's the new faction, the outcasts, that are drawing all the attention. These rebellious road warriors are all tooled up with the finest cobbled together death devices that tying some scrap metal to a stick can produce. Unless, of course, you're a brute, where you get access to the pinnacle of outcast technology. A big block of concrete with rusty spikes in it. Excellent. Of course, if you're already a Dark Age player, then you've not been forgotten. Check out these new models for the Forsaken and Brood. Not only that, but the new Forces of Dark Age book is launching now. If you're interested in any of the factions, then this is the book you need if you want to immerse yourself in your faction background and flavor. That flavor is probably of a radioactive barbecue type, I would bet. So we've had Space Elves, we've even seen some Dark Eldar. But now let's get a look at some proper Dark Elves. Check out these Drow Warriors from Otherworld Miniatures. Otherworld is one of the premier manufacturers of dungeon monsters around today. They have a great selection of old school D&D style creatures, as well as some brilliant monsters for use in the Labyrinth Lord game. They've recently launched a set of Dark Dwarves and are also offering a selection of their stunning models in new box sets. Perfect for stocking your empty dungeon with griblies to munch some unsuspecting adventurers. Gen Con 2011 is fast approaching. And this year, our man Adam, he'll be on the ground again, making videos of all the new cool stuff on show. But in the meantime, let's have a look at what's been hitting the net. First, we'll start off with some pictures that have been coming in for Malifaux. Here's the Dead Justice box set. This set can be used as either Guild or Resurrectionists. And I think it looks damn cool. Also, watch out for the Nightmare Teddy. And for those of you that feel like splashing your cash, if you spend over $100 at the weird stand, there's this female gunslinger misdemeanor. That creepy nightmare, Teddy. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen come out of weird. I love it. And while we're on the topic of good sculpts, 
it's very difficult to get away from two of the greatest names in miniature sculpting. In fact, probably in the world. While Alan and Michael Perry are best known for the work they do for Games Workshop, they also have a successful miniatures company of their own that creates a range of historical periods from medieval right up to the Napoleonic Wars. Perry Miniatures create their masterpieces exclusively in 28mm scale. Now, depending on where you come from, you might call that proper 28mm, or true scale, or in some places it's even called God scale. So anyway, they'll be a bit smaller than the sculpts that they do for Games Workshop, and the proportions will look more realistic. However, these miniatures can easily fit with any other 28mm historical range, or indeed, you could probably very easily slot these into any good fantasy game. Next up we have a ferocious looking miniature from the Bane Lords range. This is named Kyriok Crow, the Sea Devil. Bane Lord and Bane Legions are a superb range of massive monsters and characterful individuals that you can slot into your favourite army as a stunning centrepiece. The entire range is rapidly expanding and probably has something to please most tastes. They even have some very specific sculpts that might please some of you very discerning types who are always in search of that very, very specific model. So you've read the books, you've watched the TV show like me, you've probably even had the whole production crew on the beach next door to my house filming. But did you know that there was a miniatures range? That's right, George R.R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones has an entire range of models created by the sculpting masters over at Dark Sword Miniatures. All the notable characters are represented in all their 28mm glory, and the paint jobs on these models are to die for. What you're looking at is a selection of just some of their work over at Dark Sword, who also do other models that are just as exquisite as these. Maybe we'll have a look at some more of these next time. Well, Halloween may be over, but we couldn't go without showing something sinister for the season. Spellcrow created that really cool model for Halloween, and you can always go check it out again. As you can see, we thought it was an awesome model. Spellcrow are a Polish company that have an interesting fantasy range in the style reminiscent of the now defunct Rackham models. Now don't forget, the Rackham range is on its way back as the models are being remastered in resin by Legacy Miniatures, so stay tuned for more information on them over the next months. Groovy! So what else did 2011 bring us? Well, it brought us a whole plethora of amazing vehicles. And in this segment called Vehicles, myself and Romeo are going to show you some of the best. After a week of playing Dystopian Wars, we thought we'd take a look at some Uncharted Seas and Firestorm Armada from Spartan Games. Here are the new fancy fleets for Uncharted Seas. These are remastered versions of the previous Uncharted Seas fleets, with sharper sculpts and some new details all due to the new CAD process that they've put in place. You can expect them to hit store soon if they're not already there. But not only that, check out some of these new models for Firestorm Armada. We have them in the studio and we should be taking a look at these models very, very soon. And if Starship Battles just ain't your thing, well then don't worry, there's always Dystopian Wars. And here are the latest 3D renders of the new walking fortresses and dynamic capital ships that you can expect to see in your Victorian steampunk force soon. Cool Distress Post apocalyptic vehicles are all the rage, and none more so than this beat up battle buggy from Puppets War. These guys are another Polish company who specializes in conversion parts for your favorite range of miniatures. This model could easily fit into any gothic sci-fi game, or indeed a near future game, where everyone has gone a bit Mad Max. We've already had Star Wars in this episode, but how about some Star Trek? Mongoose Publishing have just released the first images for their new miniatures for the use in the Cult Arms Starfleet game. 
Cult Arms is a game of space battles involving starships of various sizes, classes and alignment. Battling across the stars using the usual dice and measurements to determine the outcome of ranged fire and of course boarding actions. The system is simple enough to easily pick up, yet deep enough to be a fun way to simulate titanic battles between your favourite Star Trek races and factions. Have you always wanted your Klingons to face off against the Federation somewhere around Uranus? Then now, you can make it so. If you're into your Second World War gaming, then this month saw the release of Hellfire and Back for Flames of War. This new rulebook is focused on the early war in North Africa, so you can expect some dusty tank maneuvers as well as sweeping desert battles in the Northern Sahara. And Hellfire and Back isn't the only new book due out. There will be Burning Empires where players can experience the battle for the Mediterranean, and two books dealing with the war on the Eastern Front, Grey Wolf for the German forces and Red Bear for the Soviets. And if you're not familiar with Flames of War, then check out some of the latest 15mm models released for the game. This game brings to life epic battles played out with the forces of the Allies facing off against the might of the Axis. Which side will you choose? It wouldn't be a good week unless Forge World had produced something titanic for the Warhammer 40k universe. And here it is, the Praetor. This model promises to be impressive judging from the size of some of the other super heavy tank models. And this should be huge and no doubt terrifying to any opponent who dares to oppose the might of the empire of mankind. Every orc needs a cool ride, and what better form of transport could your average green skin ask for than a dune buggy? The guys over at Cromlech have produced this fun looking vehicle aimed at expanding your orc army with some fabulous looking fast attack options. Of course, if you're not an orc player, then the buggy would also be great for a post apocalyptic game, or even some sort of light army transport for a desert themed imperial guard list. Lasers, I'm pre-painted with the two buzzwords in 2011, and myself and Lloyd in this category called Terrain are going to show you why. Every tabletop in the world deserves to have some really cool terrain on it, but we don't all have the time to make and paint terrain as well as all those multitudes of toy soldiers that we have covering our kitchen tables. Well, have a look at these pre-painted ruins from Manor House Workshop. There are a few manufacturers that produce pre-painted terrain, Gale Force 9 being another. With the hectic work lives that many gamers lead, it's surprising that there just aren't more. Anyway, we're always interested in hearing more about pre-painted terrain manufacturers. So if you know of any, or you are a manufacturer and you want to get in touch with us, why not send the details of your product to news at beastofwar.com. Do you guys get the feeling there's been an increase in MDF laser cut terrain recently? I get that feeling. But hey, it's cool stuff. And check out this new release from Warmill. We're excited to see more from these guys. It looks like they'll make their mark on the easy built terrain market. So let's hope we see more designs from Warmill very soon. If you're a player of Heavy Gear Blitz, then you'll know that it can be a bit tricky sometimes to get some terrain that fits with the whole look and feel of the Heavy Gear universe. Short of making it yourself, well, you were a bit stuck. At least, you were until now. The guys at DreamPod9 have been coming up with some cool new terrain models scaled to fit the epic scale and style of Heavy Gear. The Outpost will be the first model to be released, but you can expect the others to be out in stores very soon. 
we've really been getting into Heavy Gear Blitz recently, and we'll be putting up a How to Play Heavy Gear video very soon. So if this game of battling cybernetic suits has piqued your interest, then you might want to be checking out the Beast of War website on a regular basis. While we're on the topic of terrain, Partalon Miniatures makes some great looking wargaming terrain, including this recent release, The Squatter's Camp. While it may not be useful for that street protest skirmish game you've always dreamed of, Occupy Gaming Table, well you'd need more grubby tents and porta potties for that, it wouldn't look out of place as a ramshackle fort or outlying farmstead in some post-apocalyptic game like Dark Age Apocalypse. Next up, we're going to show you some more miniatures in a segment we've called, well, some more miniatures. Yes, in this one, myself, Lloyd and Romeo are going to show you some Greeks, Romans, and sci-fi goodness. It's time for some Kung Fu, superhero style. Although, I should probably be calling them Supremes, as that's the name that they get in the Pulp City superhero skirmish game. Check out the latest hero to punish crime on those dirty streets. The Crimson Oni. His high kicking, tiger style kung fu action is sure to bring some much needed hi -ya! to your supreme team. If you play Smog 13th Hour or you're a collector and painter of fine miniatures, then you'll know it's always an exciting day when Smart Max release a new model. This is Signor Geppetto, the latest model to be added to the game. The character of Signor Geppetto is based on the Italian toy maker from the Pinocchio stories. However, in the 13th hour game, the toy maker has been given a sinister twist and an army of clockwork horrors to do his bidding. Of course, Geppetto wouldn't be complete without his Pinocchio, and you can see this Pinocchio is far from a real boy. With War Machine Wrath and Horde's domination now behind us, it's time for the guys of Privateer Press to start knocking out the miniatures we need to update our armies with all the cool new models announced in the new books. First up is Trollkin War Wagon, a massive ironclad carriage bearing a thunderous turret gun capable of knocking even massive warjacks to the ground. Next up we have the Battle Mechanic Officer, He's got himself a suit of that kick-ass Man of War armor and a mad steam wrench to bash his opponents or repair those warjacks. Merck's Minis make some awesome looking sci-fi miniatures for their near future skirmish game, which funnily enough is also called Merck's. The latest faction to hit the website is the Kaizai Waza, the Japanese Megacon with a penchant for assassination. Although it's perhaps their dubious use of nuclear-powered armoured suits that makes them one of the most fearsome factions to take the field so far. Infinity are at it again with another stunning set of releases. Check these out. For Ariadna players, nothing is cooler than this new tractor mule. Awesome stuff. This remote controlled mini tank is capable of decimating the battlefield with its twin missile launchers. So you can be sure to see more of the Ariadna and in particular the French Metropolitan Sectorial Force in the local Infinity tournaments near you soon. And with a little bit more from Gen Con 2011, our buddies over at Weird Miniatures, you know those guys with the crazy talent and maybe the crazy grey matter to go along with it. You know, the makers of the fantasy horror skirmish game, Malifaux, well they were there in force with a staggering number of new additions to their range. Just take a look at some of these amazing new sculpts. Malifaux has a stalwart following with fans always eager for new and horrific additions to their crew of crazy scientists, gunfighters and zombies. But I would hazard a guess that even a dyed-in-the-wool fan would have their mind boggled by the array of shiny new stuff 
that Weird had on display this year. When you're looking for trolls, you want them big. And these War Games Foundry models might just be the biggest in the business. Over three times the height of your standard 28mm model, these guys are set to be the centerpiece of any army, or perhaps the death of some dungeon crawling adventurers in your favourite RPG. Studio McVeigh are at the top of their game, and their range of bespoke designer models, well, they're incredibly popular. Azumi is the latest limited edition release to hit the shelves, and she is a fantastic looking Japanese warrior, or warriorette. Anyway, she's perfect for a fantasy game, or even some Japanese themed sci-fi. However, as a limited edition, you might want to reserve this model for the best paint job you could muster. So don't forget you can get some extra hints, tips and tutorials on our show Three Colours Up and of course Three Colours Up Tips on Backstage. So there'd be no reason for you to be intimidated by a model of this standard. And if limited editions just aren't your thing, then Studio McVeigh also produce a range of sci-fi miniatures called Sedition Moors. These are still very high quality, but they're perhaps just a little less intimidating than a Zoomy. If ancient battles are your thing, then the news that Warlord Games has acquired Immortal Miniatures should be great news indeed for you. Immortal Miniatures are the maker of one of the best sets of plastic ancient Greek warriors on the market. So if you're a player of Warlord's Hail Caesar game system, then you could soon be adding a large section of Greeks to your Roman and Celt collection. If you play Romans, you might also be interested in these brand new slingers hot off the presses from Warlord HQ. Everybody wants their army, troop or gang to be completely individual and personalised. And the easiest way to do that? Well we cover that in this segment we have called Conversion Parts and Bases. Chapter House Studios have had a tempestuous relationship with what you might call tabletop gaming's um, establishment. But now the bad boy of Wargaming has released a new Space Elf Warrior Princess armed with two Che, I mean, mechanical swords. Also, check out this kit that just happens to fit the Storm Raven and makes it look actually really good. Sensational armies need bases, and nothing is better than a well painted and sculpted base. Check out some of these examples from Micro Art Studio. They've got all sorts of bases to mount flying monsters, heroic champions, and even stalwart foot soldiers. If you want something to set off your already fantastically painted army, then maybe it's a sculpted base you've been missing. Okay, I was gonna do a massive wow, but I'm not gonna do it. But I am gonna tell you about cool orc heads from Cromlech. These guys are at the top of their game when it comes to the green skins. Now, have a look at these. We know that good looking models win more battles. That's a fact. So, if you want your green skins to look better, well, I advise you to go and check out Cromlech. Speaking of Necrons, of course if you couldn't contain yourself and you splashed out on a brand new Necron army, then check out these new ancient desert bases from Voodoo Works. But they're not the only sculpted bases out there. MicroArt Studios also have these versions, so you really are spoilt for choice. Of course these bases aren't just for Necrons, they can be used for any desert themed fantasy or even an ancient army. 
they would also be especially cool with some modern day soldiers in desert pattern camo. Hey, the only limit is your imagination. And now we've reached the final segment of our show titled Games You're Likely to Be Playing in 2012. Yep, put that 40k down, pick up something completely new, because you're going to enjoy some of this. 1650 is a miniature skirmish game based in the port of Yzbilia. At least that's how I believe it's pronounced. The game revolves around the struggle between the old regime and the new order, as each vies for control while other factions try to seize their own slice of power during all of this anarchy. The game is historically based and sports some of the finest miniatures we have seen in a very long time. We've yet to get in depth in this game ourselves, but a cursory glance at the rulebook, which is available for free in English from the company's website, looks to be a fast paced game with some very cool options, like cards that describe various maneuvers that can be used in battle to press the advantage against the enemy. So it's official. The popular board game Dust Tactics has finally taken the leap into the world of wargaming with this brand new rulebook straight from Fancy Flight of Icarus Games. Written by the maestro himself, Andy Chambers. Andy, welcome back, buddy. If you've been living in a box, then you won't have seen some of the fantastic looking miniatures available for Dust, and we're expecting a whole lot more as well. There's huge battlefield crushing mechs battlesuit troopers, and horrific Nazi zombies. <laughs> this game just keeps getting better and better. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones, then you may be interested to know there's actually a board game based on your favourite series. It's a mixture of conquest and intrigue, and has been created by Fantasy Flight Games, and has many hours of gameplay for two to six players. In fact, why not take a look at it now? As always, that's very cool looking stuff from Fantasy Flight Games. But just out of the corner of my eye, I've spotted Romeo from Battle Foam walk in. Yes, the maestro of foam is here with us this week as our special guest. And to surprise him, I think we'll make him do the rest of the show. But beware guys, let's hope he doesn't try and sell us all a bag while he's doing it. Finally, we have news of the starter sets for Carnivale. And these are the first images of the box art for the Carnivale factions. Carnivale is a brand new skirmish game based in 18th century Italy. Masked opponents battle against sinister monsters and scientific nightmares in the dark alleys and fetid canals of Venice, where the aftermath of such encounters can be easily hidden beneath those dark waters. The game should be available very soon, so stay tuned to Beasts of War for the announcement and check out our live show Turn 8 for more images of upcoming miniatures and perhaps even the chance to be the first to get your hands on this exciting new game. And now that we've dropped that bombshell, let's move on to a little bit of product news. Kicking off this week, the Gears of War board game is about to hit the shops. The long wait is over, the video game sensation of Gears of War will be available as a board game this week. The guys at Fantasy Flight Games have pulled out all the stops to bring you one of their top quality tabletop experiences, set firmly in the world of Delta Squad and the Locust. The miniatures are brilliant, and as always, the game looks set to cement Fantasy Flight as one of the serious contenders in the board game market. So that's a wrap. We managed to condense an entire series down into 30 minutes. Did we miss stuff out? You bet we did. And if you want to see all the other cool stuff that happened during 2011, hop on over to www.beastofwar.com. In the meantime, I'd like to wish you all a very happy new year. And for the last time this year, you have been watching On The Table. <laughs>